Hello, and welcome back to Mcoding. I'm James Murphy. Today, we're talking about generators, specifically generators and async generators that use the with statement or a try finally and a common pitfall that you might fall into. Suppose we have a generator that needs some kind of resource. It could be something like talking to a database where you need to start a transaction and then commit at the end of it, or you need to grab a lock and then release the lock at the end of it, or you need to open a file, read some data from the file, and then close the file at the end of it. For demonstration purposes, this resource is just a dummy resource that has a name and prints out its own name on cleanup so that we can see when the cleanup happens. But in real life, it could be basically anything. The normal way that we would use a generator like this is just to loop over it. So we would see yield 0 and then got 0, yield 1 and then got 1, yield 2 and then got 2, then we would exit the loop, we would see the resource cleanup happen, and then we would see the print statement after the loop. And if we actually run it, that's indeed what we see. 0, 1, 2, cleanup, and then the stuff after the loop. In this case, the resource got cleaned up because we ran the generator past the point of when resource cleanup would happen within the generator. We exited the for loop, we exited the with block, and we reached the end of the generator. But here's a question for you. Does the resource still get cleaned up if we don't run the generator to completion? We either stop it with a break or there's an exception that gets thrown and we never actually run the generator to the point where it would exit the with block. Take a moment to think about it. Will this code still print the cleanup message? Answer coming in three, two, one. Interestingly, yes, the cleanup still happens. We never got to iteration two in our for loop, but there's the cleanup message. This behavior is possible because when a generator is garbage collected, it automatically has its close method called. The close method actually throws an exception inside the generator and then continues to run it until completion. So instead of continuing with the for loop, it will exit the for loop and exit the with statement, which is why the cleanup happens. We can actually observe this behavior by surrounding the yield statement in a try except that catches a base exception and then printing it out before re-raising it. This allows us to kind of spy on the exception being raised, but still re-raise it so that it can do its job. Now when we run the code, we see loop 0, loop 1, and then indeed our try except catches this generator exit exception. But here's the tricky part and the source of the common pitfall. Remember what I said causes this cleanup to actually happen? It's the garbage collection of the generator object that triggers the cleanup. In CPython, if there are no more references to an object, it'll get cleaned up immediately. So in this case, because we know garbage collection happens here, we know that our resource will be cleaned up before anything that happens after the loop. But what if we did some refactoring and pulled the generator out into a variable? Since we still maintain a reference to it even after the loop, the generator won't be garbage collected here, but rather at the end of the main function. Therefore, our resource doesn't get cleaned up at the same place. It gets cleaned up at the end of main. This could already be a problem if the stuff after the loop expected that resource to have been cleaned up, like if it was holding a lock and the stuff afterwards also needs to use the lock. Even if we didn't factor things out into a separate variable like we did here, other implementations of Python don't guarantee the same behavior with garbage collection, and they may not garbage collect something immediately even if its ref count is zero. This non-determinism in generator resource cleanup is especially bad when you have nested resources. Just the way the code looks, programmers generally tend to assume that inner resources will get cleaned up before outer resources. But in this case, that's not true. The outer resource is cleaned up at the end of the with block, but the inner resource isn't cleaned up until the generator is garbage collected, which happens after the with block at the end of main. You can guarantee the cleanup happens earlier by manually triggering it by calling the generator's close function. Technically, though, this still isn't good enough because something in here could throw an exception and we'd miss that close call. In order to guarantee cleanup of the inner resources before the outer ones, you can use something like contextlib.closing, which is a context manager that will just call that generator close function. With this approach, the place where the generator is garbage collected becomes irrelevant to the cleanup of the resources. But be warned, code in the wild very rarely actually does this. It's super annoying to have an extra with statement around every for loop that uses a generator. So in the wild, you typically just see people depending on the garbage collection behavior of CPython.
Remember, in CPython, which is the Python that 99% of people are using, the one that you download from python.org, if you just don't keep a reference to this generator, then it will be garbage collected and the cleanup of the inner thing will happen before the outer thing. It's just very delicate and flaky code where if someone comes along and does a slight refactor, it might break. And for normal generators, that's kind of a good enough solution and the end of the story. Just don't hold on to a reference to a generator, or if you do, use contextlib.closing to ensure it gets cleaned up. But if you happen to be using async generators, then the problem gets much worse. Let's go back up to our generator and make this an async def function. We could be using an async with block or a with block or a try finally. It doesn't really matter here whether the resource is async or not. What's going to make this worse is just that the generator is async. And then back in main, let's go ahead and make main an async def function and use an async for loop to loop over the elements in the generator. And we now run our main function using asyncio.run. So this is the async equivalent of the problem we had before, and the generator is garbage collected at this point. But when we run the code, we unfortunately see that the outer resource is cleaned up before the inner one. The inner one does still get cleaned up in a similar way as in the synchronous case. A special exception gets thrown inside the generator, and then it's run until completion, which causes the with block to eventually exit. But for some reason, in this async case, the garbage collection isn't triggering the resource to be cleaned up just after the for loop like it was in the synchronous case. And as you could probably guess, the delaying has something to do with it being async. We can get a little hint about what's really going on here by reaching into the internals of the event loop that's running and looking at what the ready tasks are. This print statement just before the break is sort of our baseline, then right after the break it will go to this print statement, which is outside the for loop. The first one is just before the generator is garbage collected, and the second one is just after the generator is garbage collected. When we run the code and see the before and after, we see that there's this extra thing in the after. And it doesn't take a huge leap to figure out that yes, this is the task that closes the generator. And therein lies the crux of the problem. An async generator is async. But the garbage collector is not async. So even though the generator is garbage collected here, the best the garbage collector could do is schedule the task that causes the generator to be closed. It can't actually await that task though. If we manually sleep a few times, we give the event loop enough time to run any pending tasks. Now when we run the code, we see that indeed the inner one gets cleaned up before the outer one, which is what we want. So how do we get around this? Obviously, I'm not suggesting that you add sleep statements after every for loop. Similar to the synchronous case, the most correct thing to do that almost nobody actually does is to surround any async for loop using a generator in an async with block, where you use contextlib's a closing. All this does is await the generator's a close method on the way out. Just like with the synchronous case, this makes the point where the generator is garbage collected irrelevant to when the cleanup happens. But this is kind of unsatisfying for a number of reasons. First off, I mean, good luck convincing everyone to do this in the first place. But it's also unsatisfying because it breaks a level of abstraction. A closing only works for async generators, not arbitrary async iterables. So immediately, I now have to keep track of whether this is an async generator or just an async iterable that's something else. And second, since the pragmatic thing to do is not to put an async with around every async for loop, but only to put it around the ones that need it, then in addition to keeping track of whether or not this is an async generator, you also need to know about the implementation of the generator, and whether or not that implementation uses any try finallys with statements or async with statements. Not to mention the additional refactoring cost. Because remember, whenever a generator uses a try finally, a with statement, or an async with statement, then you need to wrap all of its usages in an async with block. But now all those callers have an async with block, so if any of them are generators, you now have to wrap all their callers in async with blocks. And this process can get out of hand very quickly. The real solution is, of course, to completely ban async for. Just kidding, but yeah, unfortunately, this is sort of just the state of affairs right now. If you care about async generator cleanup, you just have to use a closing. There is a PEP, number 533, that proposes a solution to this, though. The idea is pretty simple, basically just add two new dunders, a iter close and iter close, and change the meaning of for loops. Have an async for loop await a iter close at the end of the for loop, 
after a regular exit, breaking, or an exception, and have a normal for loop call iter close again when you either exit normally, exit with a break, or exit with an exception. This is a pretty good idea, and if Python was being written for the very first time, then this might have made it in. But as you can imagine, changing the semantics of iteration is probably a no-go at this point, not to mention how hard it would be to implement. And it would be a breaking change to any code that intends to use the current semantics, where it has a break statement, but then continues to iterate over the same generator or iterable afterwards. In this case, we open a file, process some header lines in the file, and then process the rest of the lines in a different way, so we would break and then continue processing the rest of the lines. Technically, open doesn't return a generator, so lines in this case is not a generator. But just imagine you've written your own kind of open wrapper that uses a generator. In that case, it's perfectly reasonable that the developer intended it to be this way, that they didn't want lines to be closed after the first for loop. So anyway, I don't think this a iter close and iter close pep will ever be added into Python. Aside from outright banning the use of async generators in your code, which I guess technically is a fine solution, the best thing to do is to just be aware of it and add this to your list of quirks of Python that you need to watch out for. Once again, I'm James Murphy, and this is mCoding. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and consulting. Check out my company at mcoding.io. And thank you to my patrons and donors for helping to support the channel. Don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, and slap that like button an odd number of times. See you in the next one.